Applied Linguistics at the University of St. LaSalle, Bacolod. In his college years, he was named as the Most Outstanding Drama Awardee, an English Proficiency Awardee, and the sole awardee for the Allegre Abelardo Ledesma Award for Excellence in Culture and the Arts. Correspondingly, he was named Mr. WBSU 2013, first runner-up, aside from his other male pageant titles in the university. He has won three national competitions, Oral Interpretation Contest during the National Presa App in 2011, storytelling competition among 116 festival state universities and colleges in the Philippines during the Pasok Literary and Cultural Festival in Cagayan de Oro City in December 12, 2014. Just by the following week, he was named champion in the extemporaneous speaking contest during the National Rizal Youth Leadership Institute in Baguio City. Since then, he has trained champions for English, Filipino, Hiligaynon, and Kinarea literary contests, including newscasting and pageants in Iloilo and Antique. He continues to write winning contest pieces and is frequently invited as coach, judge, host, event organizer, and speaker of various fields of specialization. He has written modules for creative writing and journalism classes in elementary and high school. He is now working on English grammar modules for high school students. He serves as a trainer, a lecturer for law aptitude exam and LEPT focusing on basic and advanced English. He also has been giving short courses for grammar and composition among law students and professionals. Currently, he is a faculty member of West Visayas State University College of Education teaching language, literature, research and professional education subjects ladies and gentlemen mr esper ball caesar h kadiao our english lecturer for today thank you thank you sir oral for that uh kind introduction hello everybody good morning good morning good morning sir it's nice to meet you here, um, even though we're just uh, seeing each other virtually. Um, I hope that we could uh, have a wonderful and worthwhile time um, having this lecture for your exam. Uh, I think um, with your presence today, it is an evidence of your commitment, uh, not just to pass the exam, but to top it, okay? With the help of uh, PCCE, I know that you could uh, not only pass the exam, but really actually ace it. I think you're in really good hands. So thank you for choosing um, PCCE. And of course, thank you for putting your trust in me uh, to handle the lecture for general English. Well, uh, I assume that you are from varied branches and uh, varied branches and varied uh, institutions. I hope that we could... Uh, uh, you know, uh, be as one as we learn and relearn, get to have a refresher of all the English lessons that you've had, probably even way back in the elementary years, you know, because when you uh, take the exam, you never know what will come out, specifically with general education subjects. So we'll try to uh, cover as many topics as we can. Although English is quite broad, it also covers literature, well, we'll maximize our time, and I hope that you could follow along with the discussion this morning. Um, I'll be flashing my screen, and as I present the slides, I'll be um, I'll be also having an uh, interactive lecture. So if you have questions or anything to ask or clarify, you can probably send a message na lang in the chat box so that I could also look into it and probably uh, respond to it as swiftly as possible, okay? Um, you may or may not open your camera if your bandwidth would allow, then you can open your camera. But if it's not convenient for you, um, you can just choose to close your camera. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, I, I, I expect that you would uh, follow along with every slide or with every presentation. Okay. With uh, today's topic. Okay. I think others are still coming in. Um, okay, there you go. 
Um, I think you have already uh, a few of the handouts given to you for this lecture. Um, but again, there are items and topics that uh, I'd like to include or add and augment for this presentation. So um, please uh, follow closely. I'd like to share my screen now for a moment. Now, with regard to your attendance, probably um, a facilitator from PCCE could uh, help you uh, with regard to your attendance. Okay, I'll be sharing my screen for a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's here, I think. Oh, are you seeing my screen now, class? Can I hear a response, please? Yes, yes, sir. Yes sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank yes, you. Sir. Okay. Let me check. I'll stop share again. And how about now? Is it back again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, as I have mentioned uh, earlier, uh, English is quite broad, okay, um, because it, it covers not only language but also literature. So um, for those who are not English majors, you might probably double your efforts in trying to recall or refresh your memory with the topics regarding English. Most topics that would come out in general English for LEPT would uh, lean towards English grammar which is also a big chunk of English itself, reading comprehension, vocabulary, and literature. So we'll try to focus on these four as these are the most evident topics related to LEPT. Well, these topics are broad with themselves. So we'll try to un unpack specific um, ideas, specific rules, so that it would also guide you along the way. Now, let me just start with a little bit of an activity to boggle your mind and condition your mind about learning and recalling topics in grammar. I would say that English is a crazy language. Most people believe, especially those people who are not native speakers of English, that the language itself is quite complicated to learn. Well, in simple words, I would say that English is a crazy language. Now, we have three words here on the screen. Um, I'd like someone to participate or interact who'd like to read these words for me, please. Would like to read, just unmute yourself and go read, please, because I cannot see those hands being raised. Would like to read, no volunteer. Let's have a simple of, okay, go for it. Go for it. Calm, calm, Tom. Bomb. Thank you. Can I hear two more? Thank you for that. Can I hear two more? Who wants to do it next? Come, Come. Come. Bomb. Okay, very good. Okay, next one. Last one. I think there's another one. Me, me sir. Go. Come, tom, bomb. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Now, as I have mentioned earlier, you know, English is a crazy language. If you take a closer look at this set of words, these words are spelled almost the same, but pronounced differently, right? They're spelled almost the same, but pronounced differently. So we say comb with a silent B, comb. Then we say tomb, tomb. Then we say bomb. Interesting, right? We say comb, we say tomb, we say bomb. 
words which are spelled almost the same but pronounced differently. Let's have the next one. Who'd like to read these words? Volunteers. I'd like to hear from three volunteers, please. I'm sorry, I can't see you. I can see the frames. I'm only seeing my own slide. Anyways, I'm not you. I'm not used to having Google Meet. Well, anyways, uh, you just unmute your mic, please. Then read the words. Where, where, where? Thank you. Let's have two more. Where, where, where? Thank you. One last. Where, where, where? Thank you. This is another case of a set of words that are spelled almost the same, but pronounced differently. Okay? This is also another evidence why English is a crazy language. We get to encounter these words. Oh, they spelled almost the same, but we actually pronounce each differently. We say were, 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 which is the past tense of are. So we say were. Then we say we're, we're. We're is actually a contraction of we are, right? And then we say were, uh, we say where with a little bit of airy sound there, where, like when you say who, so there's a little bit of an airy sound, where. So we go back, we say were, we're, and where, okay? That's another evidence why English is a crazy language. Now, with regard to words, we might also be fascinated with how English words are made. If you take a look at this uh, picture, this is actually called eggplant, right? We're familiar with it, but there's no egg in it, okay? So out of nowhere, we just call it eggplant. Same thing with this one, pineapple. We simply call it pineapple, but it's not from a pine tree nor a family of an apple. Another thing, we'll begin with box and the plural is boxes, but the plural of ox should not be oxen, not oxes. Now, with regard to plural forms of nouns, tumalabas sa exam, what is the plural form of this word? Then merong apat na choices. You have to determine which is the correct plural form. Then it becomes tricky because we get to follow some rules, but there are a lot of exceptions as well. This is an example. Usually, for words that end with X, we make it plural by adding ES, right? So we say box to boxes. But then again, there's an exception. If we take a look at the word ox, we do not say oxes, but we pluralize it by saying oxen. So it takes a little practice and memorization to know these things. Another one, one fowl is goose, but we call it geese when it's two. But the plural of moose should never be meese. You may find a lone mouse or a nest full of mice. Kasi yung pura lang mouse, di ba mice? Yet the plural of house is houses, not highs. See, there's a little bit of a mismatch with the rules. If the plural of man is always men, why shouldn't the plural of pan be called pen? Right? What's the plural of pan, class? Uh, simple, simple question. What's the plural of pan? What's the plural of pan? No one knows? Pants. Very pan? good. We simply say pants, right? Okay, because when you pluralize it with pen, it would mean a different thing. Okay. Furthermore, celebrator versus celebrant. Have you encountered these words, class? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay. Very good. Now, if we get to determine someone who is celebrating a birthday someone who is celebrating a birthday pag lumabas sa exam john is celebrating his birthday today he is a celebrator celebrant celebrating celebrated what do you celebrator. think Celebrator. Okay. Celebrator. Very good. Thank you. 
So usually, um, way back in the traditional uh, sphere, the ba usually would hear, uh, let's welcome the birthday celebrant. Okay, uh, we wish all the best to the birthday celebrant. But when you mean someone who celebrates an occasion, we actually refer to him or her as the celebrator. Whereas the celebrant refers to someone who officiates in a ceremony or ritual. Diba for those who are Catholic, usually when you attend Mass, you welcome the priest by saying, let us all stand as we welcome the celebrant. Okay? Meaning the priest or someone who officiates a ceremony, a Mass, or a ritual. Okay? So tawag natin, birthday celebrator, then celebrant for those who officiate uh, uh, for someone who officiates a ceremony or a ritual. Next, I look forward to meeting you. Lalabas exam. Observe the sentence. I look forward to meet you. Is the sentence correct? Wrong. Do you think? Wrong. No. The correct answer is, alam siguro naman English majors to know. Lahat pa kayo English majors? No? Mixed, mixed, right? No, sir. Mixed courses. Yes, sir. Merong ed? Yes, Can I hear? Can I hear? Someone? Yes, sir. Okay, merong yes, sir. Yes, ed? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Okay. So, sige, English majors. Okay, impress me. What's the correct function or phrase or structure of this one? I look forward to, sinabi ko na kanina to, I think. I look forward to what? To meeting you. To meeting you. Correct. We actually to meeting. It. A gerund, no? I look forward to meeting you. Okay. O lalabas sa exam, which among the following choices are, or which among the following choices is a correct expression. Okay. So when you encounter this phrase, you say, I look forward to meeting you. I look forward to meeting, uh, I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to calling you. Because, for what reason, bakit naging gerund? Bakit merong ing yung, yung verbal? Kasi yung look forward to is a fixed phrasal verb. Look forward to. It's one entity. Okay? So it needs another another verbal to make sense. I look forward to meeting you, to seeing you, to calling you. Okay? Next. Talabas exam. One of my friend is a lawyer. Identify the error. Is it one? Is it friend? Is it is? Is it lawyer? Friends. Friend. Friend. Friends. 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 So when we encounter friends. this phrase, we say one of my friends. Why? Let's just simply translate it in our language. Isa sa mga... What's friend? in Hiligay nun again? Abian. 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 Isa sa mga abian ko. Meaning, among your friends, there's one who is a lawyer. So, typically, we say, one of my friends is. So, bakit is yung verb? One of my friends is. So, bakit is yung verb? Thoughts. English major? Okay, English majors. Masaya sana pag face-to-face -face class, no? Kasi namimigay ako ng prices. Sige, next time na lang. Again? Bakit is? One of my friends is. Because of the word one, Correct. sir. Actually, Referring the subject. for a one person, sir. Correct. Actually, the simple subject here is one. Okay? The simple subject here is one, which indicates um, singularity. That means it should take a singular verb is. Ano naman yung friends? Friends is actually the object of the preposition, no? meaning hindi siya pwede maging subject. Later on, pag-aaralan pa natin yung subject verb agreement dahil 100%, talabas yan, kahit isang item lang. Okay? So we'll discuss that later. Okay, but for now, with regard to expressions lang muna, we do not say one of my friend is. We say one of my friends is. Next. Eto. Before tayo mag-proceed sa next slide, um, we get to compare these two things. Uh, I mean, these two phrases. Uh, kilala niyo sila? The people on the screen? Do you know them? Yes. Yes, yes, correct. Okay, with the name there. And the group of me. 
the girl group is Little Mix. Little Mix. So, so sabi niya si Mary Chan sa lyrics niya, whenever I see girls and boys selling lanterns on the street. Pero sabi ng Little Mix, in their lyrics, it was mentioned, when you hold me in the street. Now, a little a little thing to boggle your minds, which between the two is correct? What do you think? Which between the two is correct? Or on. do we get on? Okay. Okay, may punta si Sir Marichan. On. Okay. Tama ba si Sir Marichan? Mali yung little mix? Yes, yes. On. On, on then. Okay, two it's points. On. Okay, three points. On, sir. On then. On. Oh, so mali si little both. mix. Both. Okay, meron tayong both. Okay. Other responses? When referring to the street, sir, it should be on. Okay, on. Okay, marami ng points kay on. Uh, some more thoughts? On, sir, on. On then, okay. On. Mm, okay, sige. Now, um, based from your responses, typically, yung on the street kasi is usually evident dito sa Philippines. Okay? But when we trace back its social linguistic rules, um, on the street and in the street are both correct. On the street and in the street are both correct. But how do we get to see the demarcation or the difference between the two? Yung on the street na ginamit ng si Chan is actually American English. Yung in the street ng Little Mix, British English. Dito sa Philippines, yung F Philippine educational system follows the American English. Therefore, mas evident dito yung paggamit ng on the street. But both of them are correct. Later on, in the succeeding slides, um, we'll have to learn pa about prepositions. Okay? Uh, this is actually a, a dilemma among Filipinos. The use of prepositions kasi ang daming prepositions. Okay? We'll just learn them later on. Now, going back to my, to the highlight of this presentation, of this slide, with regard to British English and American English, there's actually a difference not only with these phrases, but with other words as well. Diba? Sa British, Eng sa British English, we say chips, but American English, we say French fries. Sa British English, we say flat, but in American English, we say apartment. Sa British English, meron tayong lift. What's the counterpart sa American English? Elevator. Correct. Elevator. Elevator. Very good. Sa British naman, pavement. Sa American? Sidewalk. Correct. That's why sabi nga ni, ni Adele, di ba? Chasing pavement sa kanyang lyrics. Pangit naman siguro pag sinabi, chasing sidewalk. Okay? Now, sa British English, my term na fill-in. Sa American English naman, meron tayong term na? Fill out. Correct. Pero, what do we usually use here dito sa Philippines? Fill out. Oh, not not necessarily, no? Because fill when you up. get to fill up, right? Fill Correct. Up. Fill up. Fill up. Fill up. Fill up. Fill up. Fill up. Okay? So we get to use fill up for what? To fill up a form or to fill up a document, so on and so forth. But fill up, if we focus on the general academic English, would mean a different thing. Kasi pag sinabi mong fill up, it would suggest what? It would suggest what? Yung pag sinabi natin fill up, ano kayo ibig sabihin nun? Or pa para saan ginagamit? Can someone, can someone unmute? When you're filling a container. Okay, when, when you're filling up something tangible, no? Fill up the glass with water, fill up the pail with water. So that's actually uh, how you use how you use uh, the term fill up, okay? So I think that's a difference when using fill in and fill out. But American English, fill out. Fill out the form with, uh, fill, out the, fill, up, fill out the form with black pen. But when you say fill up, it's actually something tangible, okay? Um, aside from those, you also have spelling deviations between two British, uh, between two varieties of English. Yung British, 
when you say older, older, it has a new, but no U is found for American English variation. Pajamas is actually spelled with Y for British English, and we have to typically write it this way for American English. Apologize, S versus the Z deviation. Also, these words, center, center, but for British English, T R E, it's American naman, T E R. Okay? Now, they, the pronoun they. Do you consider this a singular or plural? Thoughts class. Singular or plural? Plural. Hmm? Plural. 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 Okay. plural. Good. Uh, sino may sabi na singular? Plural. Plural then. Okay, very good. Okay, what else? Wala na, wala na. Plural. Plural lahat. Plural lahat. Okay. Yeah, if we go back to its um for for a moment, Lasa. Uh, for a moment. Wait for a moment. By the way, are you from different, ano, different places? Merong taga-Gimaras? I bet. Meron ba? Wala? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, good. Uh, northern, sir. northern Iloilo, southern. Meron? Wala. Pakolod. Pakolod. Okay, good one. Okay. So, sama-sama na kayo dito. Okay. Now, going back to my discussion. Are you seeing my screen again? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, yes, sir. Very good. Yes. Um, traditionally, yes, kasi, sir. Yes. traditionally yes, sir. Um, when we talk about prescriptive grammar or, or prescriptive grammar or yung traditional rules ng grammar, di ba, we get to encounter the pronoun they as plural. So refer to a plural antecedent. But if you get to notice, sabi ng APA ngayon, yung they can also be used as singular to refer to an antecedent that is not definite in gender. Meaning, kapag gagawa ka ng sentence na yung antecedent or subject mo is not definite in gender, like when you say the student said that they, o oh, student lang yun, isa, pero yung pronoun niya is they. According to APA, pwede nang gawin yan. Okay? We can make use of they as a singular pronoun to refer to an antecedent that is not definite in gender. Okay? But, for sure, ah, sa let, hindi pa nila, I think yan, hindi pa nila gagawing reference yan. Okay? Hindi pa nila gagawing reference yan. They would still stick to the use of they as a plural pronoun. But this is just a new information that I'd like you to, uh, to consider. Okay? Anyways, APA pa lang naman ang nagbibigay ng uh, uh, legitimate action with regard to the use of they as a singular pronoun. Okay, that's new information now. A little bit of an implication of what we had is that language continues to evolve. The rules back then may evolve or may create a new one up to the present time. Yun nga, no? Even with the pronoun they, it has been used now as a singular instead of solely plural. Okay? And language may be used in also different contexts. Yung language na ginagamit natin as, um, I mean, language na ginagamit natin sa classroom, let's say for example as teachers, is different with the language that we use outside. Kasi sa loob ng classroom, it's academic. Diba? It's pedagogical context. Pero sa labas, you can actually just um, make use of language na understandable sa both speakers. You're not familiar, you're not really particular with grammar, with pronunciation, sa labas or general context. But sa loob ng classroom, in the pedagogical context, in the pedagogical context, we get to follow the academic English. Okay? Because you'll become professionals 
especially for English majors, you'll be teachers of the language as well. So you have to um, put premium with how language is taught and learned inside the classroom. Now, our topic is not actually language theories or language learning, but basically a simple recall and refresher of the basic topics in English. So I think we are good to start. Okay. Now let's talk about first nouns. Very basic nouns. Anong nalalaman natin about nouns? Can someone tell me? What do we know about nouns? What do we know about nouns, everybody? Noun is a name of a person, place, thing, event, etc. Sir. Okay, good. Well, typically we say it's a name. Name of anything or anyone. Okay. Um, based from your handouts, I think it's the same definition, right? But um, aside from those, there are different uh categories classifications or types of nouns we have common proper abstract concrete collective mass count and we'll have to determine later on yung forms ng nouns pwede silang gawing singular or pwede silang gawing plural okay let's talk about common and proper nouns first would like to read the bullets i mean the definition on the screen please common noun Thing or idea not capitalized unless they come at the beginning of a Very sentence. good. How about the next one? Proper nouns. You'd like to read the definition? Proper nouns. Names of Proper. specific people, places, things, or ideas should always be capitalized. Okay, very good. Now, from its definition, from its definition, sino makapagbibigay ng examples ng common nouns? Magbigay ng example. Okay, unmute yourself lang. I want three examples. Father. Go. Father. Again. Father. Father. Good. Next. Father. Next. Sino pa? Sino pa? Three. Unmute yourself lang. School. School and Barangay. dog. Very good. Those are common nouns. Barangay. Okay. Again, if those are examples of common nouns, we do not capitalize its first letter. Unless, of course, kapag you begin the sentence with it. Okay? Examples naman ng proper nouns class. I want to hear three examples. Ilo, ilo. Ilo, ilo. Very good. Two more. Rodilin. Antonio. Rodilin, Antonio. Those are not just like. names. Like, but specific names of people, okay, and place. That's why we begin writing them with a capital letter, okay? Now, here is a comparative example. Uh, if you take a look at the examples, boy starts with a lowercase, but John is a proper noun because it's a specific name of a person. Therefore, it begins with capital letter, okay? Same same is evident with the rest of the examples. Okay, common proper. Bilisan na natin. Number one, go. Common. Next. Proper. Number three. Common. Common. Proper. Proper. Number five. Very good. So take note, uh, you have to bank up your skills uh, with these basic knowledge, especially the uh, parts of speech na master nyo ang basic concepts. Kasi you will always apply what you have learned sa basic parts of speech in other complicated topics sa general English. So dapat very good yung knowledge nyo with regard to these basic concepts. Para pagdating sa ibang concepts ng general English, you won't be lost, okay? At least you have something to uh, pick out, okay? Punta naman tayo sa abstract nouns. Would like to read the definition and examples? Go. Abstract nouns, ideas, concepts, or emotions. Intangible, which means you cannot touch, see, hear. Smell or taste them using your five senses. Examples, love, justice, excitement, sorrow, bliss, happiness. Very good. From the, from the definition itself, 
you simply say yung abstract noun hindi hindi ano what it cannot be felt by any of your five senses love you cannot literally or actually see love you cannot actually touch or hear it okay same with justice up until happiness okay in comparison naman ano yung concrete nouns go someone concrete noun name of people places or things that you can touch see hear smell take example book chair computer flower river bank roses exactly so in comparison to abstract nouns yung concrete nouns naman pwedeng hawakan pwedeng makita pwedeng uh, mapakinggan you can smell and taste it like book you can actually hold touch and see it okay it's concrete computer flower river bank process so on and so forth so that's the difference between the two abstract intangible concrete tangible okay abstract concrete make it fast go abstract very good abstract Concrete. Of course. What do you mean by this one in number two? Concrete? Uh, Material for construction, no? Number three. Abstract. Abstract. Good. Number four. Concrete. Concrete. Fabric. 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 In Hiligayon, fabric is? Tela. 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 Concrete. Concrete. Is powder concrete? Is powder concrete? Yes. Yes. Yes, you can actually see, touch it, right? Calmness. Calmness. Abstract. What abstract? What makes it abstract? Yes. You cannot touch it. Yeah. Exactly. No touch. Okay. It's just an idea. Okay. Thank you. Next, punta tayo dito sa count nouns. Who would like to read this one? Count nouns. Nouns that are countable. Example, house, person, marbles, chairs, pots, and bottles. Very good. So from the name itself, count nouns, pwede ng account. House one, house two, house three, person one, two, three, four, five, hanggang one hundred. So you can easily count them. In comparison, naman sa mas nouns, would like to read. Would like to read. Can't be counted. Because they are always treated as a group, volume, mass, or quantity. Example: oil, water, gasoline, flour, sugar, butter, bread. Okay, good. So, yung mass nouns, simply, is a noun or are nouns that you cannot count. Oil. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oil. You cannot simply count oil. Can you numerically count oil? No, uh -huh. you cannot. So, how do you quantify oil? How do you quantify oil? Hindi maisip. Hindi maisip. Chakto ka. Hindi na siya maisip. How do you quantify then the oil or the water? Kilo. Liter. My liter. You put them into measurements, no? Measurements. Liter or kilo. Okay, by the way, class, how do you pronounce this? F-L-O-U-R. No English major? Flour. 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 What's syllable or two syllable? O pag lalabas sa let, which among the following words has is pronounced? Okay, with two syllables. One syllable. Yung flower. One. Eh, yung one flower. Kasi two syllable. Yung flower na bulaklak. F L O W E R versus flower na harina. F L O U R. I pronounce the same. So flower. Flower. What's your main ingredient for the pastry? Is sunshine flour. Flour. So bulaklak harina in English. Flour flower okay uh, count or mass faster count 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 
Hindi. Hindi. No, okay. Hindi. Hindi. Pwede mo mga isipin yan kung after 100 years. Okay, powder is actually mask na. Number three. Mask. 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 It's not easy to count sun. Okay, so it's a mask now. Next. Advice is actually, ano na siya dapat na, um, abstract. Nag-merge na siya day. Quill. Count. 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 Information. Mask. Mas. How do you pluralize? How do you pluralize information? Lalabas sa let. Which among the following is a correct expression? Still information, sir. How do you pluralize Still information? Or you can also say pieces of information. Okay? So, pwede mag re ng information or pwede siya mag pieces of information. Collective nouns. This is fun. What are collective nouns? Examples and definition. Please read. Oh, uh, langgusto mong collective group. Name of which is like a collection of people or things can be considered singular or plural depending they want depending on the meaning they want to convey. Mm -hmm. Examples. Family, team, choir, jury, committee, third class. Correct. So those are actually collective nouns. Okay, collective nouns. When you say collective nouns from the name itself, it's a group, let's just say. Yung family is composed of a number of people, right? Uh, yung team. Yung committee, yung class, there are a number of people, okay? That's why tinatawag silang collective nouns. Pero ang caution dito is, yung collective nouns, pwede kasing siyang singular or plural. Again, yung collective nouns, pwede singular or plural. Lalabas sa exam, okay? Which among the sentences is, uh, which among the following sentences uses a collective noun properly? So how do we know na yung collective noun singular? And how do we know the collective noun plural? Would like to read the next two sentences here. Now, let's proceed. Now, the uh, now, the class proceeds to the hall. Next. Now, the class proceed to their designated quarters. Okay. What's the difference between the two? Would like to explain any observation thoughts. Things that you have realized, okay, ruminated. Thoughts, observations, analysis. Are both sentences correct? Are both sentences wrong? Is one correct? Is one wrong? Thoughts? Uh, thoughts? No. Are both sentences correct? Yes. Yes, yes very good. Now, which sentence uses a singular collective noun? The second one. The second one, singular. The first, not the first. First. Yes. first. It's actually the first, correct. Now, how do you know that that collective noun is used as singular? S form verb. I say yung verb niya, my S form. Okay, correct. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, mm -hmm. how do you know na dapat singular siya? Patayaw. How do you know na dapat singular siya? Oh, tama nga, singular to. Okay, singular dapat yung gagamitin. How do you know? Thoughts, thoughts. Mm. Aside from that clue, uh, the sentence is correct. Singular nga yung collective noun kasi nga yung verb has an S form. How else do you know na correct yung answer? How else do you know na singular nga talaga yung collective noun? The word, the answer, the, artic the article, the. The, okay. But we also have the in the second sentence. 
that's a quite that's a good observation ah thank you for that but you know we still have we also have the da in the second sentence Mm. Other ideas pa? Other thoughts? Other observation? Just the word designated, sir. Okay. Um, we're, we're focusing first on the first sentence, ha? Um, my question is, how else do we know na yung class sa first sentence is actually a singular collective noun? Aside from the verb. The hall. The hall. Okay, isa lang ang hall. Isa lang ang hall. Pwede, very good. Pwede man, pwede man. But, but the, uh, but the more substantial explanation would tell us that the action is done as one entity. Okay? The action is done as one entity. That means, Kapag yung action is done simultaneously or in unison or all at once, yung collective noun, singular. Okay, meaning, yung class dito is considered as one entity. Sabay-sabay silang nag-proceed sa whole. Or in unison or all at once, they proceed to, I mean, the class proceeds to the whole. But in the second sentence naman, Yung class dito, as a collective noun, is used as plural because they are considered as separate entities. How do you know na separate entities sila? The action is done separately. In the second sentence class, how do you know that the action is done separately? In the second sentence, how do you know that the action is done separately? Because of the phrase, their designated quarters, sir. Very good. Designated, designated quarters, quarters meaning iba-iba. Okay. Siguro si, si student 1 dun sa quarter A, si student 2 dito sa B, si student 3 sa 4 magkasama sila sa quarter C. Okay? So, iba-iba. So, that's an indication of a separate action. So, let me repeat that as a recap. You can consider a collective noun as singular if it is considered as one entity. And the action is done simultaneously, in unison, or all at once. The collective noun is plural if it is considered as separate entities and the action is done separately or individually. Okay? Got it? Nakuha ba? Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay, my family is one apartment. Is the sentence correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Yes, what sir. does it indicate? Meaning, family is one entity. Jan sila sa isang apartment. But when you say, my family are in different parts of the world, is the sentence still correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. What does it indicate then? Scattered yung family members niya, di ba? Probably yung isa sa Australia, isa sa Canada, yung isa sa America, yung isa sa Pavia. Okay? So different parts of the world. Okay. The jury has to proceed to one room. Is the sentence correct? Yes, sir. Is the sentence correct? Yes. Yes. Very yes. Good. What does it indicate? Yung action is done simultaneously or all at once or in unison. And there's another clue there. One room. Okay? One room. Next. Is the sentence correct? Yes. What, is, what does it indicate? Yung collective noun na jury... Is considered separate entities, no? Meaning, yung action then is done separately, iba ibang rooms. Okay? Thank you. Walk for a moment. Um. Mm. 